close your eyes, take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the process of breathing in the body. Let your attention settle there and see if you can keep it there. Put the mind in a good object with good intentions. That's good food for the mind. You have to think about, as we go through the day, we feed the mind with all kinds of things. And you have to ask yourself, what are you feeding it? As the same principle applies to food for the mind, it applies to food for the body. There are things that taste good but are not good for you. And the food for the mind is our, largely our intentions, the objects we focus on, our awareness of those objects. These are food for the mind. And you have to ask yourself, are you giving it junk food or are you giving health food? Meditation is good health food for the mind. Because the intention here is to train the mind, to develop good, strong qualities inside. We train our conviction that our actions really are important, they make a real difference, so we have to be very careful about what we do. We have to put a lot of energy into trying to figure out what the skillful thing is to do, and also to talk ourselves into doing the skillful thing. And then once we've learned lessons from what's skillful and what's not, okay, then we try to keep those lessons in mind. Now, this is work for the mind because it keeps wanting to go back to junk food, so we provide it with a good food of concentration. Concentration is a state where you feel good staying centered here right in the body. So notice, if the breath doesn't feel good, you can change it. It's one of the reasons why we focus on the breath, because of all the properties of the body, it's the easiest to change. So see what kind of breathing feels nourishing for the mind right now. And then as you develop a more discriminating palate in the food that you feed for the mind, that's the beginning of your discernment. So these qualities that the Buddha calls strengths, conviction and the importance of your actions, the effort that goes into doing what's right, mindfulness, the ability to keep things in mind, concentration and discernment, these are the strengths of the mind that need to be nourished. That's what the meditation does. And these are good food for the mind. Otherwise the mind gets flabby, it gets it gets sick because you're feeding it junk food, looking at things that you like and listening to things that you like, but without any concern for what the results of that looking and listening will be. So be very careful about how you feed your mind, what things you focus on in the course of the day, what intentions you act on. Because that will determine whether your mind is strong and fit or whether it's weak and flabby. Because if the mind is flabby, then when difficulties arise, we just thrash around, upset that th things are difficult and not having the strength to deal with the difficulties. But if you've been training the mind, okay, then no matter what happens, you're ready. You notice people who are careless, people who are heedless, when things change radically. Those are the ones who complain the most and make the most trouble for other people. But if you've been keeping yourself fit, keeping yourself well fed, you don't cause yourself any trouble, you don't cause any trouble for other people. This is one of the reasons why meditation is good not only for you, but also for the people around you. Again, it's like feeding the body. If the body doesn't get sick, then you're not going to be a vector for other people's diseases. So for the sake of your own health and the sake of the people around you, make sure that you feed your mind well.